What's up you guys? So I got in the word today. I actually had to get into like the physical word because listening to the scriptures just was not working for me today. And I ended up in Matthew chapter 14 and I was reading um, the part where John the Baptist's head is given on a platter. And um, I was reading that and as I was reading that, I was wondering to myself, what happened to the girl and the daughter, the mother and the daughter that requested John the Baptist's head on a platter? Because, I mean, the Bible says, touch not my anointed. And John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus, the Messiah, and he was a prophet. So, you know, it's not going to end well for people that murder prophets. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I just did a little bit. I just did a quick research real quick to see what happened to her. The Bible doesn't say in scripture what happens to them. But just because I'm a curious person, I wanted to see if there was any um, reports on what happened to her. And, or them, actually, because there was more than one person involved. And I came across this website, um, it's called Hub Pages, and I'm going to link it in the description box for you guys to go do your own research. Um, and I just wanted to show you the picture that they have on there. They have a picture of her like dancing and being seductive. And um, I'm going to post the scripture in, or the scripture, the website in the description box of this video. So if you guys want to go read it for your own selves, I'm not going to sit here and read it all, but I am going to read part of it. The The researcher or historian that is speaking on this, his name is jo Josephus. Josephus, he's a Jewish historian, historian, and he gives details about like who the people are. And then it goes down to say, um, ice, ice baby, what happened to her? was reported it says that it was reported that this wicked seductress was crossing the river on foot when the ice broke beneath her she immediately sank down into the cold water up to her neck and it says that um if this is true this is ironic indeed and i have no doubt that this is this was a judgment of the lord and um salome's head was glazed by the ice and eventually severed from her body by the sharp jagged edges of the frozen water john's beheading was swift and instant but the woman who asked for his head suffered long before she died in those moments of shock and impending death i wonder if she recalled what she had done to the man of god and had a chance to repent and then it goes down to say the Lord does not tolerate those who come against his true prophets. And this bears out today as well as it did in biblical times. In 2 Kings 2, 42 young boys made fun of Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, by calling him bald head. And two bears came out of nowhere and tore them to pieces. In 2 Kings chapter 9, Jezebel, who persecuted the prophets of the Lord, was thrown out a window and eaten by dogs. All that remained of this evil woman was the palm of her hands, the bottoms of her feet, and the, her skull. In, two, in Second Kings, two groups of 50 men were killed by fire from heaven because of the way they, they approached Elisha. But the captain of the third group of 50 asked for and received mercy. I know of several situations within the past decade where prophets went to a number of pro pastors and bishops with warnings from the Lord and were mocked. Later, these spiritual leaders all died. If there's any lesson to be learned from the story of Herod, Herodias, and Salome, it is this. Heed the warnings of his prophets and keep your hands off of them, lest his wrath come upon you. So there's definitely more to the story. Um, if you go and read it on your own, it gives more history um, about who these people are and what happened to them. Um, you know, but then again, you can still take it with a grain of salt. Historians aren't always right. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but I'm not saying to believe it with your whole heart. Um, but we all definitely know about things that happen to people that touch God's anointed in the Bible, like Jezebel, for example. She's definitely a good example. In spiritual warfare, we, we loose the hounds on Jezebel because in the Bible or in scriptures, she was indeed eaten by dogs. <laughs> so it was just interesting for me to read 
of all that was left was the palm of her hands and the bottoms of her feet and her skull. I'm like, ew, that's, gr that's gross, you know? But the Lord is definitely not playing. When he defends his children, he defends his children. And he says to touch not my anointed. So that was just a little bit of digging that I did that, I don't know, it just intrigued me because I always wonder like, what happened to them? Or what happened to them? Or what happened to them? So I'm thankful to be getting in the word and actually start digging now. Um, but again, go read that article for yourself. Um, do your own research because the Bible is so interesting. Like I literally just started reading it and I was already doing some digging and researching after I just started that chapter. All right. So anyways, I just wanted to share that with you guys to remember to, to always be respectful to the Lord's people. Um, you don't even have to be a prophet to, to be um anointed he says touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm you know what i'm saying so just being a child of god nobody should be putting their 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 mouth on you putting their hands on you or plotting evil against you because the lord definitely hears all and sees all he hears conversations that we don't hear he sees things that we don't see and sometimes he shields us from knowing things that we don't need to know for whatever reason but we can guarantee and trust that the Lord has our best interests at hand. And if we're totally submitted to him, seeking him, repenting daily. I was just thinking yesterday that um, I don't work out in intervals. I repent in intervals because I literally feel like I got to repent like every 30 minutes because I, I, my sin is my sin. My skin is so sinful. My flesh is so sinful, you know. So um, don't trust a perfect Christian or someone that thinks that they have it all together. Just continue to walk in humble humbleness and humility, seeking God and making sure that you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says that if any man thinks he stands, let him be careful lest he falls. I mean, don't get prideful. Don't get cocky. If you're receiving dreams and visions and you're hearing the Lord and all of that, don't get cocky about it because that's that's just our God-given right. That's what the Lord wants for all of us. If you're a born-again Christian, that is what the Lord wills for you. He wants you to have dreams and visions and to hear him for your own self. So don't don't idolize anyone and don't especially don't put your mouth on anyone don't plot evil against his children because he definitely will defend them as you just read or heard in that story all right so i just bless you all in jesus name have a great day and shalom